Imagine this scenario, you've just finished university, graduated, you're super excited and you're going out into the workforce and then you think you want to apply some of those research skills to databases and you realise that you don't actually have access to those databases anymore because you're no longer enrolled as a student at the university. So one of the questions that we often get asked is, how do we access research, high quality peer reviewed academic research when we're no longer enrolled at university? So I want to take you through that process now, but the important thing to th remember is that research is a messy process, and that's especially the case when you're working on the broader internet that isn't tied into academic databases. So here's some top tips for research after you finish university. First thing is to make use of your state or local libraries. We're really lucky in New South Wales that the state library subscribes to a number of really high quality databases, and the same goes for City of Sydney libraries. What you want to do when you register for free with your local library is have a look at their website at their e-resources. The major databases that they're likely to subscribe to are ProQuest or EBSCO, but you can also browse for their education database options. Remember also that your state and local libraries can put in a request for a thing called an interlibrary loan. So if you've encountered a journal article that you want to access, but you can't find any way to get it, it's worth asking your local librarian if they can source that article for you. You can also add library links to Google Scholar. To do this, hit the hamburger on the top left hand side of the screen, go down to settings and then search for local libraries that you can add to Google Scholar. You can even add the University of Sydney library while you're still enrolled here and there are some circumstances where Google Scholar will still enable you to access full text articles after you've graduated. It's also helpful to know about the file type trick on Google, just the general Google search. And that's if you want to get a report, for example, by a consultancy, um, by a government department, one of the really useful tools you can use is to type file type PDF into your Google search. And what that will do is limit your Google search to only PDF files. It's a really great way of cutting through a whole lot of websites when you want to get to a particular document that's out there on the internet. When you're using academic databases, whether that's at university or after you leave university, it's a really good idea to search using keywords and then to skim article abstracts. This is something you can do with university databases even after you've left. So when I say use keywords, I mean combining them together. So if you wanted to search for online learning, for example, super topical, combine that into a phrase search using quotation marks. Um, rather than typing in a big long question like you might do into Google, it's better to break your question down into search terms. And the same goes for using synonyms, that's related terms. So high school can be also described as secondary schooling, um, and that's in a number of different databases. You might be describing particular keywords in different ways. So group those related search terms together and connect them with the word or so that your search is picking up the maximum possible results. It's also really important to look for open access articles. So these are articles where the author or the journal has decided to pay to make them available to everyone in the world rather than locking them behind a paywall that only universities can access. If you see open access articles, they're intended for practitioners and for people in the broader community to read. So many databases will allow you to filter for open access. So it's a really good way to access peer reviewed research while you don't have access to the university's databases. And I mentioned a moment ago skimming through abstracts. One important thing to remember is that most university libraries will actually have a search tool on their homepage, which you can still search and which will index a huge number of the databases that they do subscribe to. So while you may not be able to get access to full text articles in their library search tool, for example, you will still be able to read the abstracts of those articles and then you can use some of the other tools, so ProQuest through your state library, to track down a full text copy. The University of Sydney repository is also another place to access frequently open access articles or sometimes uh, early prints of articles that scholars have put into the repository to make it available to people who don't have access to databases. Repositories exist at every university right around the world, so it's worth searching these too. And Google Scholar will index many repositories. So if you find a search result in Google Scholar that you're interested in, have a look at the other versions of this article link underneath the result in Google Scholar, and it should give you access to any repository copies that are out there. When you found a really good article, it's also a good idea to follow the breadcrumbs for more useful articles. The ways to do that is to have a look at the reference list of that really good article and see what kind of articles it's referring to and search for those in Google Scholar. 
You can also use the cited by function, which is available in Google Scholar. It's a little link underneath every search result. And this shows every article that's come out since an article that you've found and links you through to those sources as well. Look at the keywords that are used in key articles because these can help inform your searches of other databases. And it's also worth looking at key authors and the names that recur regularly in reference lists and in your search results, because those authors are likely to have publications and you might actually be able to reach out to their institutional repository to see the kinds of articles that they've got available through that. It's also a really good idea while you're still studying at university to get in the habit of following useful blogs. So two of the best education research blogs in Australia are Edu Research Matters and of course the Conversation website. Education researchers and academics right around the world post to these kinds of fora in order to make their research available to practitioners like you and to the broader and general public and also to have an influence on policy. So it's a really good idea to have a look at these uh, blogs and websites because they'll link back to their research and also you can get in touch with the academic as well. Subscribing to podcasts is another great idea to stay across current education research. There's a really great podcast called the Teacher's Education Review, and that's available on all your major podcasting platforms. It's worth subscribing to Teacher's Education Review because you get to hear from a whole lot of education academics right around Australia who are talking about current research that's happening in universities and in schools. So it'll keep you across that current cutting edge research field. You might also consider getting on a social network like Twitter or searching for uh, Facebook pages or other groups related to professional associations. You don't have to tweet while you're on these media, but you can follow a whole lot of education academics and researchers. There are communities of practice and teachers who are on Twitter who post all about different kinds of research. It's a really great community. And the other great thing is as research is released, you often find a number of free copies are made available by the author on Twitter. So that's one way to stay across it. You can also see new research that's being released by major education journals. They're all on Twitter, so it's worth following. And I think one of the other messages that's kind of coming through here is that it's okay to reach out to people. If you've encountered a journal article that you really want to read, reach out to the authors of that article. Generally, they're very prepared to share their research. Research is meant to be shared and especially meant to be shared with the people who are going to be enacting elements of that research in the classroom. So reach out to authors, reach out to librarians, talk to your colleague teachers, talk to people on Twitter. Everyone is keen to share research with you. And the most important thing of all is to stay curious after you leave university. Just because you don't have access to these amazing databases doesn't mean that you can't get access to that research. It is out there. There are plenty of people who are able to help you. And of course, ask in the comments of this video if you actually want me to point you towards some resources for you personally as well.